All right, guys, welcome back. Monday, March 30th. Back on the uh, TR250 project after spending a little bit of time. Yesterday, uh, helping Les out with his 76 TR6 uh, project. Got a little bit of a start on his uh, restoration plans. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm now on vacation until April 21st. Haven't been laid off yet uh, due to the uh, prevailing circumstances. But we've been told to take uh, as much vacation as possible from work, trying to burn off our vacation days. So April 21st is my first day back to work, so we've got some time to be out in the garage. So we'll put it to good use. We'll uh, continue working on uh, <clears throat> getting this bonnet, bonnet ready for epoxy primer. I think I left off the last video that I had just uh, guide coated this area here and this area up on the nose, which were giving me a few problems. So I think we're going to get it this time. And we will uh, break up the long block shortly. <coughs> Excuse me, and start sanding that off. I'm going to do a few other things out here today. Oh, by the way, you watched my video yesterday about me uh, smashing my finger. It's a good thing I didn't actually have that on video because I think I taught less a few words yesterday. Anyway, here's the uh, the aftermath. You can see that. Uh, Finger is a little bruised up and a little swollen. Basically, it was uh, throbbing most of the night. I'm surprised I don't actually have much more damage on the top of my nail. Got a little bit of damage, but uh, a little bit of bruising there. But yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a stunner. Anyway, work our way through it. So I thought uh, we might also do a little fun project while we're. Uh, doing some sanding just to break things up a little bit. I thought I'd do a little bit of a painting project. And uh, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Uh, I actually got out my new uh, little SATA jet. I think I've had this for about a year now. Never used it. So this is my brand new uh, SATA mini jet. And this is the uh, 4400 BRP mini jet. So I'm looking forward to using this. I got this primarily to do tight areas, uh, you know, when you're going to be spraying the engine bay and stuff, it's hard to get a full-size gun down there, down in there, or under the dash, for example. I'm not going to put this on a rotisserie when I paint it, so uh, we're going to have to maneuver a gun into some tight spaces, so the, uh, I thought I'd invest in the mini jet, and we'll put it to some good use along the way on other projects as well. So what we're going to do is a little paint project on the side. I'm going to grab some uh, sheet metal and sand it down and get it primed up. Then we are going to paint it with uh, that base coat of Night Watch Blue that I have. I have, I think, a pint or a quart, I can't remember what I've got, of Night Watch Blue, which is close to the original Royal Blue. Right, it's one of the suggestions to replace the formula for the Royal Blue that was on this car, car initially. So it's called Night Watch Blue. So we're going to spray that as a base coat. I've got my uh, Matrix uh, Euro clear it will clear over top of that but we're going to do a mid coat we're going to do uh, something a little different something that uh, some of you might not uh, particularly like let me uh, show you what we're going to do okay a little history on these cars to begin with uh, for some of you who may not know so the um, TR5 was the UK version of this car and the TR5 was uh, petrol injected or fuel injected if you want to call it uh, that was the main difference between the uh, the TR250 and the TR5. The TR250 uh, came to North America. And when the TR250 came to North America, it had dual Zena Stromberg carbs on it instead of the fuel injection. That's one of the major differences. One of the other major differences on the car was the striping package. For North America, this car had a bonnet stripe and went across the nose of the car. And I guess at the uh, time this was done, it was to appeal to the North American market, because remember back in the day, this is 1968, you remember this, the uh, muscle car scene was happening and you had the, the Super Bs, for example, or the Camaros with all the rally stripes, or the Bumblebee stripes. So I think uh, 
Triumph was trying to capitalize on that at the time. So they put this bonnet stripe on across the bonnet. Now the UK never got that, so you can sort of distinguish uh, a TR5 from a TR250 pretty quickly, um, as the TR5 doesn't have the bonnet stripe. Or you can just quickly look at the badge. Obviously, it says TR250 on the North Americas and TR5 on the TR5s for the UK. Okay, so a lot of the UK members, the TR5 owners, or even the TR250 owners in the UK don't particularly like that stripe option. I think it's kind of garish or vulgar, a little over the top. So if people are restoring 250s in the UK, they generally don't put the stripe on. And anybody that owns a TR5 doesn't particularly like the stripe anyway. So here's what I was thinking of doing on this car. So this is not going to be to everybody's taste, and I understand that. And it may not be to my taste after I do some, uh, some practice painting, but uh, here's what the plan is, and I've been planning this for some time now. But I thought it would be kind of cool to do a ghost stripe across the front. So what I mean by a ghost stripe is that it only show under certain light conditions or the way you know the sun strikes it outside, it'll only show. So it won't be obvious when you're looking at it, but under different lighting circumstances or shadowing, that stripe will show. So in order to do that, I've picked up some pearls. So I've got a silver satin ghost pearl here and a silver ghost pearl pigment. Now, these are gonna be added to a mid-coat clear. So after the base coat, we'll tape off the stripe, add this uh, pearl to clear coat, spray the stripe, unmask it, and then spray just regular clear coat over top to seal it in. So I've never painted with pearls before, so this is all new to me. Um, so we're going to practice this before we actually get to actually painting the bonnet of this car, whenever that might be. So I thought it might be fun just to practice on a, you know, a scrap piece of metal and uh, do a couple little trial and error. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that today We have while well, we have a little bit of time. We'll probably just start with uh, cleaning up a piece of metal and getting it primered first of all. It's not really warm in the garage right now. It's only 50 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 10 degrees Celsius, so it's not painting temperature. I do have the heater on out here. So I think we'll take this in uh, relatively small steps um, and go from there. So I'll take you along. You can tell me what you think. Um, after you see the whole process, I'll try to document it as best as possible. So wish me luck. Anyway, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start sanding this bonnet. Actually, first thing I'm going to do is probably grab a piece of metal and cut some metal down to size that I can play with. And then we're going to start sanding. All right. All right, guys, there's our uh, test subject. So we've just got a first coat of primer on there. We'll put another coat, a couple coats of primer on there so we can get it uh, sanded down a little uh, smoother than how I can spray this out of a rattle can. So we'll come back to that. But in the meantime, it's going to be a little bit difficult now. I want to start sanding, but I don't want to create a lot of dust, so I wish it was warmer outside. I just moved this piece outside to bake in the sun, but it isn't, so uh, we'll have to figure something out. All right, here's my solution to the problem. It's got its own hermetically sealed drying compartment, so we can continue on with the sanding and create as much dust as we want. All right, to sanding we go. All right, guys, sorry for the noise. Uh, just mixing up the uh, color coat. So we're going with the, uh, I mentioned the Night Watch Blue, so we're just uh, mixing that up. We've got our gun all uh, ready to go, so uh, our piece is nice and dry, so we'll go ahead and spray that. We'll wipe it down first, we'll spray it, probably do three coats and see what that looks like. Alright guys, the uh, base coat stage is complete, we've got three coats of that Night Watch Blue on the panel now, and we're just going to let it sit and dry here for a while. It's already been drying for about a half an hour or so. Uh, according to the tech sheet, uh, tape time is one hour at 25 degrees Celsius. It's uh, only about mm, less than 20 degrees Celsius in the garage right now. So I think we'll probably go for a couple hours before we attempt to tape on this. And then we'll go to our next uh, step, which will be that uh, pearl 
clear, let's call it, to get that ghost effect, and then we'll do the final clear coating of this panel. So it'll be a while yet before this is done. We'll hopefully, obviously, try to get this done tonight. It's about uh, 4.30 at the moment. All right, guys, we're back in the garage. It's about uh, 6.15 or so, and uh, the panel is now dry enough for me to do some tape work on. So we've got our fine line, our regular masking tape ready to go. Um, we're going to do as just a simple stripe pattern on here. Something that will kind of try to mimic the uh, 250 stripe a little bit. Uh, then we've got to figure out what we're going to do as far as the ratio of the uh, pearl to clear. I've got sort of an idea, but again, this is really experimental, let's say. So this is uh, going to be a first try at, uh, at getting a ratio for the pearl pigment in the clear. Uh, obviously I'm going for a ghost effect, so I don't want it to be overpoweringly, I don't want it to be very visible, so uh, again, it's going to be a bit of trial and error going on as far as that mix ratio is concerned. So anyway, we'll come back once we get this taped up. Alright guys, we've got our uh, stripe pattern taped off, so what we'll do now is we'll just move this over to the spray area. We'll get our clear out and uh, we'll mix up a little batch of clear and I'll uh, tell you what I'm going to do as far as ratio is concerned. Alright guys, so we're going to be using the uh, Matrix AG40 LV. It's a uh, Euroglass uh, high solid clear coat. Uh, we're going to mix it two to one. Um, I've got a medium hardener uh, which should work okay in the temperature for the garage right now. Uh, we're going to mix two batches up. We're going to mix one with pearl and one without. Um, so we'll figure out what the ratio for the pearl is gonna be I'll be right back all right guys we've got four ounces total of the uh, clear and um, hardener mixed so we're gonna add to this four ounces we're gonna add an eighth of a teaspoon of this uh, silver satin ghost pearl so we'll see how that ratio works out all right there's the pearl mixed up kind of looks like a glass of milk anyway we'll uh, assemble the gun and uh, we'll do a pass over that panel Trying to figure out whether I want to do a single pass or a double pass. I think we may just do a good single pass and then call that a day. I don't want to make it too dark, so let's do a single pass as an experiment. Alright guys, just unmasked it and I can already tell this is not going to work. This is way too much uh, pearl in there. I mean, I want a ghost effect. Anyway, we're going to finish this panel up. We're going to do probably three coats of clear just to see what it turns out, want, out like. I want to see if I can actually bury those uh, lines from where I cleared it once already and see if I can uh, actually make it uh, fairly smooth with three coats of clear on there and, and bury those tape lines. All right, we'll see. All right, just coming up to 8.30 and we're on our final coat of clear, so we're just going to spray it down. Let it dry for an hour or so, then I'll come out and let you take a quick look. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get it outside in the sun a little bit tomorrow and have a better look at it. But uh, like I said, um, I know that stripe's going to be too dark, but uh, anyway, it's good practice anyway. Let me finish that uh, last coat of clear coat, and then uh, I'll come back one more time for the night, and then we'll call it a night. Alright guys, quick update for you. I think it's about uh, 9.30, quarter to 10. First off, uh, like my little new uh, SATA mini jet, it performed uh, very well. It's going to come in handy on uh, my projects in the future. So that was a good purchase, so quite happy with that. Now onto the panel. Here it is, and maybe I can just sort of pick it up without dropping it. Let's see, it's kind of a little sticky still. So, here's what it looks like. I'm bringing it into the light a little bit. Now, obviously that stripe is much darker than I want it to be. Again, it's supposed to be a ghost stripe. That's far from being a ghost stripe, so way too much pearl in that uh, clear mixture. You can see I got quite a bit of dirt in it and I expected that. Of course it's, this has not been buffed. I may buff it just for fun, see how good I can get it to come up. But anyway, there's an idea of uh, that um, pearl uh, mixed in with the clear. And I do not see a tape line, so it seemed to cover pretty well. So I'm happy with that aspect of it. So again, this is a learning curve. So obviously you need to use a lot less pearl this was the matte um, or the flat pearl. I can't remember what it was called. I think the next time we'll uh, try the other um, silver that I have and uh, see what kind of effect that gives me. Obviously uh, a lighter amount mixed in with that clear coat. So you know, I thought I'd give you just a quick uh, end of the night uh, look at that. Like I said, we may buff this for fun, um, but we'll probably practice on another panel probably tomorrow. Um, we'll just keep going until we get the, uh, the formula right. So anyway, good. Uh, Good learning uh
process today and uh, we'll pick it up tomorrow. All right, guys. Have a good night. Thanks.